Hi everybody. Today we are going to talk about the identification of mutants. We had previously mentioned about the different mutations that can be possible to microbes. Like you had frame shift mutations, you had deletion mutations, you had biochemical mutations and different types of mutations were being present. But now we are coming to the task how to identify these mutants. Now, in the case of microbial mutants, you can identify them based upon the change in their uh, colony morphology or based upon their phenotypic characteristics. The organism or the microbe which has not been mutated is referred to as a wild type of uh, mutant, wild type strain, whereas the other one which uh, the one which has undergoes a mutation resulting in the formation of a change phenotype is referred to as a mutant. Now, you can identify some physical mutations by physical techniques like you can also see the colony because a colony may look different from that of a wild type. Now, for example, you have the colony which produces a co colored pigment that might be changed into a colorless one by the action of mutation. Now, you can look at this. This is a serratia strain. Uh, serratia normally is being found to be a pinkish, orangish or sometimes it, it will also have a uh, reddish tinge, a reddish tinge on its colony. But after the mutation, it will convert itself sometimes into a colorless form. So in such a case, by looking at the mutant, uh, the colony color itself, you can identify the mutant. So different organisms could be uh, different microbes could be identified like this and some of them uh, probably could also become like now pseudomonas aeruginosa it has been found to be green in color in a particular ph okay uh, when you grow it in a particular ph it has a green in color but what happens because of a mutation sometimes at the same ph it would have a different color that could be a probably a mutation okay so like that uh, provided all the conditions are the same if the organism's colony morphology is getting changed, that will help us to identify it. Then another factor that we have to say is the colony morphology. Uh, you are all familiar with the different colony morphology strategies. You can have now punctiform, some will be punctiform, some would be circular, some would be filamentous, some could be irregular, some would be rhizoid and some would be spindle shape. And coming to the elevation, uh, some would be flat, some would have a raised colony. Uh, sometimes it can have a convex colony, it can have a pulvinate colony or an umbernate colony. And, and uh, if you go to look at the margin of the bacteria, sometimes it can have an entire margin or it can have an undulate margin or it can have a filamentous margin, a lobate margin, a eros margin or a curled margin. So these are all possible for a what? For a case of, uh, in the case of different bacteria, they can form different colony morphologies. Now consider a case, an organism which has been found to have an entire margin and uh, you are mutating it. After undergoing mutation probably, the colony morphology of that organism can get converted into a wavy form or an undulate form and you know that is visible using our naked eye itself. So such change will indicate that a mutation has happened or sometimes the even uh, margin one might get converted into a filamentous form or it can happen vice versa. You cannot say that always this is the pathway because different microbes react in different ways. So what we have to say is when there is a change in a colony morphology uh, based upon its external appearance, you can identify the mutations probably that could have happened to them. Then coming to the next characteristics uh, way of I am I'm giving you some examples from some research papers so that you will uh, ha, uh, be able to understand it in a very better way. Now this is a paper on Salmonella typhimurium and its motility. Salmonella typhimurium it has mainly two types of motility one is a swimming motility this is a swimming motility as we see and this is a swarming type of motility exhibited by wild type strains of Salmonella typhimurium. Now what is the difference between the swimming and swarming motility is, okay, you when you just pinpoint if you take an agar plate and you just put a spot inoculation, okay, here just one dot of it has been uh, put forward here is inoculated over, 
is inoculated at this particular spot. And this is a uh, agar which contains 0.35 percent each agar. So, what happens the organism after uh, some time of incubation it will start growing in the round. Okay? And if in a swarming motility what happens you are giving 0.6 percent each agar and the you can see the difference in the growth of it. A swarming is something which is like uh, evading something, something like that you invade like it is uh, um, spreading all over the plate and it is uh, like a swarm means is like uh, it will be more uh, cloudy like of growth. Okay. So, in the case of swarming motility, these two motilities are the motilities which have been exhibited by Salmonella typhimurium. These are the wild type strains and what happens after a particular mutation in this study they have developed some mutants. This is a delta FLH E mutant uh, coming to the swimming motility, the swimming motility is not that much altered here. But coming to the swarming motility, this is the way how they inoculated and the organism lost its swarming motility. Now coming to this plate, this is also a mutant but they have supplemented it with something which is helping it to overcome the loss of the swarming motility. Here also uh, this is deficient, E is deficient. Uh, so what happens? The swarming motility is not been present. So the change in motility of the organism can also be used as a mutation detection tool. So, these are all coming under phenotypic characteristics. Another example that we come across is a change in the uh, cell morphology of Campylobacter. Campylobacter, uh, it has been found to be a helical form of bacteria, okay, and when that was undergone different mutations. Now, these are all the same organism which has undergone different type of mutations. And you can see the change in the shape of the or the cell morphology of it is being found to be different. This is different from this. Here you do not have that spiral shape to see. Here you have a little bit of uh, the curling, but uh, even you can see some dots are also being found here. So the cell morphology of the organism can also be changed by as a result of a mutation. And it is by the SEM analysis that they have detected the mutations here. So, these are some of the strategies which you can identify the organ microbes using their colony morphology, using their cell morphology, using uh, you can use microscopic techniques to identify how their cell morphology is changing, how their motility is being changed and how their pigmentation property has been changed. These are all techniques which will help us to identify the mutations which are happened to microorganisms. In the coming session, we will be talking about the technique which has been used to identify biochemical mutants. Hope so this is clear to you and I wait on to see you in the next part. Thank you.